Yeah. You can be seated. Amen. I told Brother Watson when we passed, I said, I thought we still had a little time left. I thought you were going to teach Sunday school this morning. I'd like for us to pray, Will, for this message this morning. You don't have to get up. Jesus, God Almighty, I pray, God, first that you bless your messenger today. I want you to bless your message because that's the important part of this program today. I pray, God, that you open every ear in this building today that can hear and that they'll act upon what they hear. And I pray, God, you touch this tongue of flesh. Thank you, yes, this heart this morning to Lord, them, God, God, what you give Jesus, to your service because Jesus, I'm subject to you Lord, Lord, Lord not to this people Lord, and not to Lord, myself thank you, Jesus, Lord, Lord, give you the praise Lord, and glory and let everybody say amen Hallelujah. Jesus is a good God yes, he is. and if you know any other God I'm going to tell you he's not any good Lord, come on now come on. Praise God. brother Whitmer asked me the other night, and I had a fire and message built up within me. And I thought to myself, that never does go out. If it does, I'm in trouble. Yes. All right. yeah. Brother Whitmer, if ever you stand behind this pulpit, and there's not a fire built up in there, you're wasting your time. That's right. That's right. That's right. And if we come here just to hear whoever's behind this pulpit, we're wasting our time. Yes, right. We need to hear what thus saith the word of God. That's right. And I'm looking at all of you this morning. Thank you, Most you ladies got your hair fixed up real pretty tonight. Some of you men didn't even comb your hair. Some ain't got none too comb. <laughs> but you all look real nice to me. Praise but I've got a problem. You can't look at me and tell me how good looking I am anymore. <laughs> at one time, I was most handsome in high school. Yeah. Right. It's not there no more. <laughs> but beauty is only in the eyes of the beholder. I can see you, but I can't see what's inside of you. Brother Hall, there's only one that can look on the inside. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Our inside yeah. attributes oftentimes tells the outside how it should look, what it should say, and what it should do. Yeah, all right. That's right. Yeah. I've got some scriptures today, and I'm limited to how much time I can spend with you this morning. I didn't leave my car running. As a matter of fact, I cut it off. But <laughs> I asked my pastor, I said, how much time can I have? This much? This much? Yeah. He said, well, maybe 15, 30 minutes. I said, well, what if I just spend all day and take care of the evening service, too? If I get tired, I call on other preachers. you got a house full of them. Yeah. Kind of left his head. I said, you don't think there'd be nobody here for that evening service? He said, well. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you something. We get in too big a hurry. Yes. Delivering this message. Yes. I can get up here and speak like a Yankee and do 90 miles an hour. <laughs> I was with some of them Yankees one time and they told me up there in the military in New Jersey when we was getting ready to go to, to Germany, Nash, you got to talk a little bit faster. I go to sleep between every other word you say. <laughs> That's that southern draw. Yeah. 15 minutes, it takes me that long to say hello. Yeah. <laughs> But I want you to know that I love you this morning. Yes, sir. The only reason our pastor is him is because he's got a love in his heart for those that's outside these doors. Yes. Yes. Probably more so than those that's inside these doors. Everybody inside these doors should be ready to meet Jesus. Those outside the door is not ready to meet Jesus. Right. Now you can take that for what it's worth. Yeah. And I'm glad I cannot see what's on the inside of you. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes sir. Amen. I love this church family. Thank you, Jesus. I lo love this pastor and his family. Yes, sir. It's my pastor. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Brother Whitmer, if I get out of this book, set me down. I thought walking up here now, he still has time to change his service. And if God's moved on him to take this service, 
I'll go back and sit down. All right, That's you. still the way I feel about yes, it. Sir. I don't want to say anything contrary to this word and anything that would hurt you or your family or anybody's feelings. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Bless you, Lord. Yes. I visited my daughter yesterday afternoon and invited her to Sunday school. When she was nine years old, she got the Holy Ghost. Long, beautiful blonde hair plumb down to her waist. I think I've told this before, but one of my friends in high school, I've been witnessing to him trying to get him to, to come to church after I got in church. I wasn't in church in school. Went through the military, I was not in the church. Got married, and thank the good Lord, the lady that I married had once had the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I want to tell you something. Everything that come out of a bar room it's not all ungood. That's where I met my wife. She was not there on the make. She was there to make money to feed her two children that she had. And she let me know that right up front when I said, would you like to go get something to eat? She is the reason I'm here today. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of good things in those ballrooms, but there's a whole lot of bad things that pass through those doors. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine there's several you could probably say, oh, me, to the amen. But I said all of this to say that when we come to church, if we've got the muddy grubs and we all down and out, if we don't leave lifted up, it's not Brother Whitmer's fault. No. Right. If you leave this morning, I pray God give everybody in this house just a little bit of understanding on what you give me. If I stand up here for 30 minutes, or if I stay in the dark, and ain't nobody here but me, I never will forget the first service on Sunday morning over in Maryville. Had a grandson with me. Paul Paul said, what you going to do if don't nobody come? I'm going to preach to you, bub. You just yeah. sit on that pew. I'm going to preach to you. <laughs> Amen. So, Brother Whitmer, nobody don't come. Just preach. Yes, sir. Yeah. Like the preacher said one time, God spoke to him to go out on the bridge and preach. He got up, went out and preached on that bridge. Went back to the house, went to bed, and years later, there was a man stood up and testified about hearing a preacher preach on top of a bridge, and he got the Holy Ghost, and he become a preacher. Yeah. We never know. We That's never right. know. Right. I'm going to try to talk to you a little bit this morning when the tares become snares. You've heard this parable preached many times. And do you really know what a parable is? A parable is, is simply the explanation of a comparison of something. Exactly what it is. In this parable, it's about the good seed and the bad seed. And I've asked Brother Hall to read a few scriptures for me because up here... Uh, I don't have no contact lens, and the lens that I do wear every now and then to read this word, I've got to adjust it to get it to where it focuses in. But anyway, <coughs> an explanation of a commercial, or a comparison of the kingdom of heaven to a field, the planet Earth. Yeah. It's not just a small garden. When I was growing up, we owned dead on five acres. And I thought he owned 500 acres when he'd hand me that, that hoe and say, go out and dig the weed. <laughs> and he took us four boys out there. We were door set, and I was the second out of the oldest. He'd show us what he wanted taken out of that road. And he would call, he had a middle bus buster that he had tied behind that horse. And once he'd get everything planted and it'd start coming up, he'd take that horse and he'd go down through them rows in the middle bust out that grass and all that stuff. <coughs> Our job was to go along then with a rake and rake that, get it all out in the middle and then take it out to the end and put it in a burn pile and burn it. Any of y'all know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, well say amen every now and then. Amen. amen. <laughs> but daddy was serious about don't touch the vegetables. Yeah. And he'd show us, this is a vegetable, this is a weed. It looked like the whole thing was weeds to me when I started. After a period of time, 
He quit going down through the middle of that, and he quit letting us go out there with the hose because he said after a certain time, we'll do more damage to what we've got planned oh than getting the weeds out. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. And he didn't really know anything about this book, but he was telling us the truth. Yes. Ray, his mom and daddy, even whenever he was grown, had the Holy Ghost. And, uh, but he never did get the Holy Ghost. But when the snares, uh, when the tares become snares, Brother Hall, Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to, through 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then? Had the tares. And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Yeah. But let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Brother Hall, could you emphasize on verse 30 just a little bit there and read it again? Verse 30? Yes, sir. Let both go together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn. And everybody could say again, oh me or amen. 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 I would pray that everybody in the sound of my voice would be wheat. Yes. Sometimes I wonder within myself, what am I? Yeah, my Lord. And if we don't stop and consider who we are, what we are and why we are, we're going to be misled. Yes. Yes. A snare, a snare is simply something that will entangle, that will ensnare, that will cause chaos, it will cause problems. That's where this United States and this whole planet Earth is at right today. Oh. It's in a snare. Yes. Yes. I'm going to bring out a little while a little bit about authority and power. All right. Sister Connie's got signs out about being reelected. Mm -hmm. Once she is elected, then she has to go before the magistrate. Yes. And she has to be sworn in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then she probably has to go, maybe not now that she's already been, but because her dad was a justice of the peace, that don't mean that she's qualified to be a justice of the peace. So she's probably got to go to some seminaries and be enlightened on what the limit of her power and her authority is. Right. Right. Likewise, with judges, with politicians, and even with the President of the United States, they have to be enlightened on how much power they have. The sad part about some of these politicians and some of the judges they think that thus saith what comes out of their mouth is the true law, and it's not right. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. This servant come into this landowner, to the master. Should we go out and take them out? What did he say? Leave them alone. Yeah. Right. Leave them alone. There's just some things, Brother Whitmer, we just have to leave alone. All right. Because it's not in our jurisdiction. Amen. Amen. All right, bless you, Lord. To tell anybody that they can't come in this house. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's Lord, right. Bless you, Lord. When the tares become snares. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are those tares and those snares at? Yeah. 
I can look around this morning and I see a few new faces here within the past year. But I can remember back the first service I came in here, Brother Whitmer, right after you had been voted in. There's still a few left of those first original ones. If everybody that come through those doors that were tares had not have turned into snares, this house would be filled today. Yeah. We would be exceeding 100 real easy. Yeah. Don't you love him today? Yes, yes sir. sir. I'm talking about Brother Whitman. Yes, we need to be thankful that we've got a man of God that will stand up here and he'll get this book and he'll say, Thus saith the word of God. That's right. Hallelujah. I had a man which was a preacher in the church that I pastored in Maryville, older man, retired, grown family. Well, the national will come to this church. As long as you stay in that book, I'm with you. Amen, amen, amen. When you get out of that book, I'm out of here. One of the tares in the church become a snare to him. He went and told him a falsehood on one of my daughters. So after service that night, I had preached and I felt the anointing and sure enough, that snare come unraveled. He met me down here in front of God and everybody. And he said, I'm out of here. You're out of the book. I said, say what? He, you allowing your, your daughter to shack up in a, in a camp house that you own? I said, I don't know nothing about this, sir. All right. He said, I'm out of here. You're out of the book. I said, well, brother, I can't do nothing about that. Right. Like I'm out of the book, then I guess I'm out of the book. But I knew in my heart what had happened. This brother had been down setting some illegal truck lines in the creek by the camp house, and he seen this car pull up, and she got out and wouldn't put some clothes in there. The guy that brought her down there didn't even get out. She just couldn't put her clothes in there and left. So he assumed that she went, he went on in there and the program went on. I said, let me explain to you after I found out what happened. I didn't even know what he was talking about. Right. There's some things that parents do not have any control over what their grown children do. Right. And it's getting to where you ain't got too much authority and power over what the young ones do because the government's stepping in and say, you can't, you can't, you can't. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's the truth. Come on. <laughs> when the tares become snares. Yeah. And I pray today that if by chance anybody in this house falls under this category of the tear, I say, please, please, don't become a snare. That's right. Yes, That's right. right. Amen. 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 The seed, the good seed, is the people in here that once was a bad seed. It's been converted. Yeah. <coughs> the owner of the land said, no, no, leave them on until the harvest, and then we'll separate at the harvest. There will be a separation. There will. There we don't need to do no separation here. Right. Right. God will take yeah. care of that. The master will take care of that. He'll handle it all. He will. Right. And I've heard it in other places that you know, people are calling division, causing division. That's all well and good. The pastor can call them in, set them down one-on-one, -on -one and counsel with them. Right, Brother And then if that don't work, then he can get a couple more and have them there as a witness. And then if that don't work, he can bring it before the church. Right, yeah. And then he's at liberty to do whatever God puts on his heart. That's kind of the way I look at it. But let's go a little bit farther than this thing. The good seed. Where is the good seed at? The good seed is in the house of God. The good seed is out on jobs where the good seed works. Yeah. The good seed's in the marketplace when you go shopping. The good seed is in your own home. Right. 
these snares, these snares and these tares, is a lot of times seeds don't have nothing to do with it. It's what you got in your hand yeah. that becomes in your heart. Yeah. Then that tear in your hand becomes a snare and it destroys you. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Yes, sir. It says here that a snare is anything serving to entrap, entangle, or to catch unaware. Yeah. We need to not be unaware of situation, situations around us. Yeah. Yes, sir. We need to be fully aware of what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, when I was growing up, Mom and Daddy had all authority and all power over us four boys. And when Mama waded into a football game or a baseball game out in the field, if there was a problem out there, she didn't care which kid she got a hold of. <laughs> that peach tree limb went on them little naked legs. Yeah. They run home free. Well, when they got home, what happened? Miss Max said, oh, well, that's good. I'm going to call her and thank her. You needed that. <laughs> you do that today and see what happened. You'll be before Sister Connie down there. <laughs> and then she'll authorize her authority to say, Get a shorter weed. Get a shorter weed. <laughs> I love the Lord today. I love the Lord today. But this field that's being talked about is not no little half acre like Daddy had. It's this entire planet Earth. It's every church body that's being taught what thus says the word. Yeah. It breaks my heart to say that a lot of the churches is packed out with tares and sand. Yeah. <laughs> There's not even any good seed in there for the Lord to deal with. <laughs> Before he can deal with a tear or a snare, that's got to be converted into a good seed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We can see, even today, in this house, the evidence of the tares and the snakes. Yes. In every church house, yes. if there's good seed there, yes. there's going to be bad seed there. there. You go out there and you take a bulldozer and just push off everything on top of it. A few days, you know what's going to happen? Yes. <laughs> Vegetation's going to come up. Right. Weeds and seeds. Sad part about it today, in a lot of the states, the weed is being planted as the entire crop. Yeah. Yeah. Called marijuana. <laughs> and if you don't think that ain't no tear and a snare, yeah. Yeah. you look at our barters down there with the, the yeah. snares and the tears that's coming across. Yes. Yeah. Millions of pounds of all this junk is there that's killing the people. Yeah. 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 But that's where authority is not being properly used. Yeah. Right. The border guards down there, they cannot even do their job. The power that they have to catch and put in jail, they got to catch them and release them. Just let them go whatever direction they want to go. Yeah. That's not God's plan. It's always been a rule of authority and of power. And if you don't have authority and power, a lot of dictators get their authority through power because they take over then that whatever authority they want, they got it. Yeah. But in a democracy such as we're supposed to have today, yeah. that authority clarifies what power can be used. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise yes. God. A parable. Simply an explanation of a comparison of any situation. Yeah. We've got two pretty girls sitting up here. Mm -hmm. Got a nice looking pastor sitting up here. <laughs> Second row, I ain't going to laugh with But everybody in this house, I don't care who you are, when you smile, you look good to Jesus. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Yes. You two pretty girls, one of these days, you're going to smile at the right gentleman. You'll be changing your name. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way the program goes, yeah, right. You've seen it come to pass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> snares and tears and tears and snares. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Authority and power. Every day we see the authority and the power of our people called parents diminishing, getting less and less. This enemy, you don't know who he is, he's Lucifer, Satan. And he's got his authority by the power that he brought with him from his creation down to this earth. Yeah. Bible says he is the prince of the power of the air. Yeah. Amen and amen. Yeah. amen. Can authority and power through our JP, <laughs> through our judges, through our political system, can they do anything about the tares? Well, it appears that today, if you rob something, it's over a certain under a certain amount. You don't even go to jail. Now, what kind of authority is that? Yeah, that's right. You see the chaos that we've got in the streets and a lot of these these cities is being burnt down and nothing being done. If you let somebody that's got the truth stand up and protest a little bit, what they're going to do? They're going to go to jail. Yeah. Right. We're witnessing it right now. We're right. witnessing yeah. it right now. Mark 13, 34, Brother Hall. Right. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Brother William, you're a servant. Yeah. You told us yourself you were. You've been given authority. Before you ever qualified for that authority, you had to study this book from front to back. You had to go before the board. They had to question you. Yeah. I've been there, done that. And when it all boils down to it, you're subject to a higher authority. Right. And when we forget that, or if we should forget that, then we've got a bigger problem than we think we have. Right. Everybody is subject to rules and regulations. Right. Right. As long as you're still breathing this air that's been given to us by our Creator to breathe. Yes. Right. And when we lose that authority and that power, then we quit breathing. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But it said there that the son of man is a man taking a far journey who left his house. That was Jesus Christ. He left his earthly house and he went on a far journey. Now he's in his heavenly home, but before he left, he gave the apostles and the disciples and everybody a thought. Yeah. Right. To a degree. <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. And it goes on to say there a little bit farther. Gave authority to his servants. You see that word is plural there. It's got an S on the end. Sister Hall, that means there's more than one, don't it? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> and to every man. Well, how did we get that? Let's look a little farther. Brother Hall, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. Read that first sentence one more time, Brother Hall. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon right. you. All right. Who? <coughs> Every individual on this planet Earth yes. Yes. that comes to Jesus and he converts them and changes them, such as some of you and I. Yeah. Then we have received power. That's we right. cut ourselves down so small and so little yeah. because the enemy has come in, yeah. the terror has come in, oh. and created snares. When we come up here to pray for somebody, Brother Whipper said it or not, those of you that's got faith, lay your hands on this anointing yeah. Come on. Let me tell you something. We got power. Yes. Sometime in that corner, afraid to speak too loud, or afraid not to speak loud enough. Bless him, Lord. I better stop right there. Bless him. 
We got power, church. Yes, we do. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, those of you that's been been converted, you've had the conversion of this scripture right here. But ye shall receive power. Yes. The other scripture said the servants will have authority. Yeah. That authority and that power has to intermingle and be distributed such as thus saith the world. Right. Yeah. Right. You're the most beautiful people at this moment in Faywell, Texas. And those that's at home, not able to come, God's looking down and he can discern between a frown and a smile. Yes, he can. We look silly though going around all the time just grinning and smiling. <laughs> hey, he needs to be somewhere else. Yeah. They got a place called asylum for people that didn't sign. <laughs> Don't just go around smiling all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I went down that road and had to pull over and stop and, and wipe my face off because of the tears that I've shed crying over somebody that I know is going astray. Oh. They have allowed a tear to become a snare to them and yeah. encamped around about them. When I went to the daughter's house yesterday afternoon to pick some food that she had prepared for me, and I invited her to come to Sunday school this morning. She comes out with purple hair. Yeah. <laughs> and when she was nine years old, with beautiful blonde hair, speaking in tongues, yeah. as the Holy Ghost gave utterance, yeah. a tear turned yeah. into a snare yeah. and got her. Yeah. Yeah. And the only thing that can release that snare a snare is a trap that a hunter used to go trap animals. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, the only thing that can release that snare is that hunter that locked that snare. Yeah. It hurts when you see somebody. Most of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Done your best to live your life before them. And they do not take your teaching as they should. That scripture that says, you know, they'll not be far from their ways when they grow over. To me, that's all well and good, but that's a little weak. Bless you, Lord. I pray that if there's anybody in this house today, if you don't understand what I'm trying to say, it won't embarrass me if you raise your hand. Bless you, I'll go back over this again. Bless you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. you shall receive power yeah. after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. First Corinthians 15 and 24, Brother Hall. Okay. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. The last part of that scripture says rule and authority and power is going to be put down. Yeah. When? When the harvest comes. Yeah. 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 We don't have to worry about tares. We should hope this thing will fill up with tares. And that we can pray them through that they don't come, become snares. Yes. 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 A weed will multiply faster than anything else in the garden. Yes. Yes. You go out there and plant them tomatoes, potatoes, and beans and corn. Yes. You see which comes up first. That weed's going to come up first. Yes. Right. Is it the soil's fault? No. Is it the planter's fault? No. Is it our fault here because some people came in and decided not to stay and become a part of this? Well, maybe to a degree. Bless you, Lord. Maybe if we was a little bit stronger spiritually and people could really feel and see that. But I'm going to tell you something right here, and I'm going to go out on a limb. And I hope it don't break off. Bless you. The Bible says that God has to call every individual. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Right. You were called. That message went out and you started feeling guilty and ashamed of your past life. Yeah. 
Something's dealing with your soul. Right. Something's yeah. dealing with it. And what is that something? Yeah. It's the guy that went on the far journey. He left his home and he gave authority. Yeah. 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 We got authority this morning. Do we use that authority wisely sometimes? Yeah. Maybe not all the time, but hopefully. <coughs> but for those of you today, I feel like that Jesus is getting closer and closer yes. for the separation. Yes. It says in the book that in the last days there's going to be a great falling away. Yeah. Then he comes right back and says there will be a great revival. Yeah. We're wanting to see a great and mighty revival here. We're wanting to be in a program that will see 5,000 people here in did I get that number too big? No, no. <laughs> Where's the money going to come from? Let me tell you something. If God's in it, who can be against it? Right, that's right. right. That's right. There's got to be a few people in it, but don't you think he's got people out there that's got money in their pocket? Come on, man. In their checking account, yeah. I ain't got none in my... Oh, whoa, wait a minute. I do. I have a couple of 20 with it. <laughs> I feel old bro with my my tie. <laughs> And the money's gone, brother Whitman. I apologize before this whole church. But I'll pay you interest on it when I do. I got in here a while back. It wasn't much interest, and I didn't know what interest plan to go. I started calling him, asking him what kind of interest he's getting on the savings program. I thought, I said, well, he'd be embarrassed to tell me he didn't have a savings program. I don't know. <laughs> don't you love Jesus? Yes! yes! You don't want to be no tear, and you sure don't want to be no snare. Amen! Amen! Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I want to tell you something about this here epidemic that's going on. There's been a lot of powerful men on the face of this earth that God put on this earth. Yeah. Let me back up a little bit. He put everybody on this yeah. earth. Yes, he did. You heard the story about the man that could build a man. I think I might have told you about it. Let me tell you again. <laughs> this man said he could build a man told God I can build a man just like you built a man God says show me Brother Whitmer old boy goes on and he picks up a hand of dirt just before his hand touched that dirt God says stop yeah. that's my dirt get your own dirt, your own dirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I hate mud yeah. I was waiting in that stuff knee deep down there on that job and went south. I just broke down, started crying, praying. Everything broke down. Nobody out there. Look down. That's what you made out of. Mm -hmm. You ever wondered, you folks, who wear white shirts, have a collar, just dirty? Yeah. I talked to God about that. I said, well, it's just some of that dirt in you wearing off. Yeah. <laughs> if we ever get to where we think we ain't nothing but dirt, we become Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love Jesus? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. What can be done about the tares and the snares? <coughs> can authority or can power do anything about it? Really, they're not doing nothing about anything harder than trying to increase our taxes and putting yeah. us deeper in debt. Yeah, yeah. I know it, bless you, Jesus. Amen. Bless I've got a couple more pages here that I'm going to have to speed read. I'll be through here in a little while. Today, I promise. <laughs> if the tear is on the pew, not on the street. Perhaps the anointed word of God will take care and make a change. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we ever get to the place that we think somebody ought not to be in here, my, my. come we're on, we're, we're a problem. Yeah. Yes, sir. I don't think for a moment that we're in trouble. I believe we're on the right track. Yes. 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 I believe that each of us know where we come from. Yes, sir. Moses and Pharaoh. 
Pharaoh, Pharaoh was the most powerful man on earth during Pharaoh's yeah. short time here on this earth. That man could not stop a plague, not one plague, and he could see every one of those plagues. He seen them. He felt them. Mm -hmm. He couldn't stop it. This president of the United States is supposedly the strongest man that exists today. We are, at one time, might not be today, the most powerful nation on the face of this earth. Yeah. I think that's probably passing away. Yeah. Because if you really get in the book of Revelation, you find out that there's going to be a country that's going to take over this whole world. Yeah. China is multiplying its military every day. Yeah. And all of its weapons. Every day. And people are going to bow down to them according to the scripture. President Biden said, if I'm elected, I'll stop this fight. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know what a lying dog is? <laughs> Anybody really know what a lying dog is? A lying dog is a dog that's out there hunting, run up to a tree and start barking, and when the hunter gets up there, ain't nothing up that tree. He's, that dog's lying. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lying dog. Yes, yes. <laughs> All that he done was just tell another lie. Just like Pharaoh. Yeah. This is a pestilence that's going through this land. This land. If you get in this book, you'll find out there's gonna be some more pestilence to come. Yes, sir. Yeah. We ain't seen nothing yet. That's right. And how many millions? We don't even know how many is in the cemetery today because of this pestilence. <coughs> it's epidemic. And yep. what's it doing to our children? Mm -hmm. Locked down. How can we stop the tears? The only way that we can stop these tears becoming snares, we've got to get them in here. Yes. Right. They're not going to hear much preaching teaching out on the street. Right. Right. They're going to hear the truth in here. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And they have to be just like Peter said. After this, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You'll receive fire. Yeah. Thank you. Thank You'll you. receive fire. I'll just have to say the rest of this to another time. Come on, brother. Bless you, Lord. I love you guys. Lord bless you. Why don't we stand our feet this morning? Man, that's a good teacher. Right there. That's a good teacher. My, 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 my. Sometimes you just got to, after you plant, and it grows. And like Brother Nash said, you come to a point you got to step back. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Hammond, Yes, sir. I forgot part of my particles. <laughs> you got to step back and let it grow. That's right. Let it grow. Praise God. Praise God. And when you step back and begin to let it grow. Thank you, Jesus. God. You got you got to let God get involved. And whether it grows and is fruitful. Anybody ever seen a plant grow that's supposed to have fruit on it that never produces? You planted it and when you first did, you cultivated it. You watered it. And you did all that. When it finally took root, you backed up and it grew, but it never produced fruit. What did Jesus say about that fig tree? You see, there comes a point in time where you got to back up and let the garden do what the garden's supposed to do. You see, because all you and I can do is plant the seed, cultivate it, let it water, but once it springs up, that's, it's God's job. And if you don't allow God to get in here and produce fruit, We can't blame it on the on what type of hoe he used or the tractor he drove to go down the middle of the aisles. How much rain fell. Because, it, because when it's all said and done, God's the one that gives the growth. And when we let and we put it in the hands of God, we have to trust and believe. 
in Jesus Christ. Anybody in here believe in Jesus Christ this morning? Come on, why don't we lift our hands and just love him right now. Lord, I pray right now, God, work on my spirit today. God, don't let me become a tear. God, don't let me get entrapped with snares this morning, God. Lord, cleanse my mind and my heart today, God. I've been put in the field, God. I've been planted, God. I've been watered, God. And now it's time for me to let God begin to work and cultivate in my life so that I can begin to grow. Praise God. See, because the only way anything can grow is by the hand of God. Brother Rawls, Dad, why don't y'all come up here? We're going to lay our hands on and pray for you. Anybody got faith that Jesus is still a healer? Come on, why don't we why don't we gather around these men that did a miracle today? Is there any believers in the house? <laughs> Come on, let's lay our hands on them and pray right now. God, 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 God,